Uh, knee joint. Uh, I like the knee joint because simply it's one of the most, the easiest joint on the body to diagnose or to assess. Simply, if you are a good listener, again, you can easily find out or come up with a very valuable information that will guide your physical examination and accordingly will guide your treatment. Let's give some examples here. An old lady with knee pain deep inside the joint. The pain is mainly with end range flexion with weight bearing activities. The pain came over time. So the onset was not actually an acute onset. If you listen well, you can tell that this might be an arthrogenic degenerative problem. And according to that, your physical examination must include range of movement examination, assessment of the muscle status around the joint, and definitely you have to think about the proximal muscles around the hip, this including glutes med and glutes max. And according to that, your treatment should include arthrogenic treatment in form of mobilization of the joint, either by passive mobilization, low grade, or active exercises to maintain the mobility of the joint, but also you need to include strengthening of the muscles surrounding the knee joint and the proximal joint, which is the hip. Scenario two, basketball player who injured his knee during a game. Twisting, swelling, pain. This might indicate some intra-articular injury. And in this case, I don't think anyone will be happy to assess this patient straight after injury because sometimes using our assessment tools like a special testing or even movement examination can actually increase the patient's symptoms or actually produce injury. And also the reliability of our testing at this stage is very poor. That's why we might consider scanning for this patient in order to know exactly the extent of injury for the intra-articular structures. Later on, when this patient comes back, come back to us, we can introduce, we can use our physical examination procedure, which is similar to the lady, which is passive uh, and active range of movement testing and examination of the proximal muscles and any extra functional examination relevant to this particular patient. Scenario three, um, um, uh, uh, a gentleman in his 20s or 30 years old and you're having anterior knee pain. When it comes to anterior knee pain, uh, I think we have to consider what's actually causing the anterior knee pain. Within the research, uh, we have strong evidence to support the link between the femur as a bone and the alignment of the patellofemoral joint. That's why in our examination, we have to consider how changing the position of the, uh, of the femur can change the patient's symptoms. And if it does, in this case, this might indicate that in our treatment, we have to consider activating the muscles around the proximal joint, the hip, in order to regain the alignment of the femur bone and to regain the alignment of the uh, patella within the groove. So it looks like if we listen well, and if we know exactly what happened during the mechanism of injury, we can find out what are the most appropriate physical examination procedure and accordingly think about treatment. So what about special testing for the knee joint? We have too many special tests, uh, either for ligaments, for meniscus, or uh, for other structures. The research evidence is actually really strong when it comes to reliability of these testing. They are valid, but unfortunately, the reliability is not too high. For me, and for any clinicians, we have to consider both elements, the research evidence and the clinical evidence. We might keep arguing about the research evidence and say they are reliable tests or not. But today, I would like to raise a point which is related to the clinical evidence of these special tests. I just mentioned the player who injured his knee. Can we use a special testing with this player straight after injury? No way. Not reliable and everything will be painful. If this patient comes to us six weeks later and he's improving in terms of symptoms, why we should do a special test in this case? All what we need to do is 
to think about the problem as a big problem, break it down into smaller problems. So if he has a stiff joint, let's move it. If you have lack of activation of the muscle, let's activate the muscles surrounding the knee and the hip. If you would like to go back to training, let's just give him training, functional training exercises, as long as we do not have evidence to say that the injury is still there. Again, if you are in doubt, always refer for scanning. Special testing again. For this lady, arthrogenic degenerative, do you think actually we really need to do any special test? I don't think so, right? If you think about the anterior knee pain patient, if you know that the symptoms came gradually, symptoms comes with going upstairs or downstairs or loading activities, symptoms are localized to the anterior area of the knee, is there any kind of special test that can give us a, a clinical value in our examination? Not really. My message is sometimes we should not really think about special testing as a must physical examination procedures. That's the time that you're going to spend thinking about which special test you need to use. I do recommend that you use this time thinking about what kind of treatment strategies I will provide this patient. I hope from now on we look at the knee cases as simple scenarios that could be assessed and treated simply by good listening, by applying physical examination procedures that are relevant, and to always think about treatment package that address all the elements, the arthrogenic, myogenic structures, and also improving the function of the patient. If I give you an example of the different treatment procedures that we use for the knee joint, we have the mobilization. This could be either passive mobilization or mobilization with movement. But without actually improving the status of the muscles surrounding the knee joint and the hip joint, the mobilization strategies will not actually give us a long-term effect. That's why for every single patient, as is stated in the guidelines, either for the anterior knee pain or for management of knee arthritis or others, we have to consider good activation of the proximal muscles, this is glutes max and glutes meat. By the end of the day, we also have to consider that we are treating a human being, which means if he has knee pain, he will be quite reluctant to move the knee properly and he might develop some compensation procedures. That's why we have to consider again the neurophysiology education. We have to give the patient a clear message that lack of movement is not a treatment. Lack of movement will make your symptoms worse. And this could be through communication, by assurance, and also by giving the patient some treatment effect, some immediate effect to encourage him to keep moving and to be, be, to be an active part of the, of the treatment procedures.